Bismillah, elhamdülillah, ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulullah. This reading, inshallah, from the 40 principles of the religion, Darbayin Fiyusuddin, uh, by Imam Razali, rahmanullah. In this reading, we will uh, uh, cover, inshallah, the sixth and the seventh principle, or other principles. And the reason why uh, I will attempt to cover both, inshallah, because there is uh, uh, something common uh, between both. Because Imam Ghazali, Ghazali says about the uh, uh, the sixth principle, hearing and seeing, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is all hearing, all uh, seeing. And of course, since we talk about uh, nothing is like unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Imam al-Ghazali uh, uh, gives some details, though it is of course understood that uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees without uh, organs. We'll mention exactly what Imam al-Ghazali says, and the uh, same thing about uh, uh, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that again is without organs and by organs foreseeing we have the uh, um, all the parts of the eye and the parts of the eye uh, in terms of uh, hearing the ear and the parts of the uh, ear uh, all the way uh, all parts all three parts of the major parts of the uh, uh, of the ear, both ears, and then both eyes. And once it comes to speech, the same applies to the uh, uh, no uh, no organs, uh, the way we have in, in order for us to produce uh, sound uh, when we speak. Uh, there's a flow of air uh, that is interrupted uh, at one point of its... Uh, uh, on its way out, interrupted to create the uh, the sound, uh, the desired sound, really. So uh, the P and the B will be labio, if you will, and there is that which is labio dental. So it's a bit, a bit, you know, to the to the back. And if we speak about the ain, it is interrupted way back in. Uh, Uh, beyond beyond the tongue okay so at least I hope that uh, it is clear why uh, I'm going to speak about both uh, principles hearing and seeing in uh, uh, the when we talk about the sixth principle the summer or basar and the seventh one is in both cases, we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's just a reminder, nothing, nothing is like unto him. لَيْسَ كَمِتْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Imam Ghazali says, Rahmanullah, وَأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ يَسْمَعُ وَيَرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing and seeing. He hears and sees. No sound no matter how low, escapes his hearing. And nothing seen is hidden from his vision. No matter how, uh, subhanallah, for us, uh, there is a certain range for us. It, uh, it is either if it's too small, we cannot see it. We need a microscope, and sometimes we need electronic microscopes so that it will enra enlarge the pictures enough for us to uh, to see. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees all this. It's beyond our imagination. And the same thing about, uh, it's about hearing, about seeing, about, yes. So no sound, no matter how low, escapes his hearing and 
nothing seen is hidden from his vision no matter how minute neither does distance block his hearing or darkness obscure his vision we are practically uh, we would be impaired by distance we would be impaired uh, by the micro world if you uh, we cannot access uh, the micro uh, world same our hearing is also limited if it's too high you cannot hear it if it's too low we cannot hear it uh, you see without an eyeball or eyelids this is what i meant by organs the way we need and he uh, hears without an auditory canal or ears. يَرَى مِنْ غَيْرِ حَدَقَةٍ وَجْفَانٍ وَيَسْمَعُ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَصْمِخَةٍ وَأَذَانٍ He knows in the same way he knows without a heart. In the same way he knows without a heart in the sense of we do need a heart in order, us for, in order for us to, uh, to know. Grasps without a limb. Grasp without a limb. It's not grasping really. Uh, here we have a. This is a direct mistake. It's not really. Yeah. It's not about grasping. Yaptish. It is without an input. Yaptish. Yaptish is basically uh, uh, he uh, inflicts uh, severe punishment uh, or uh, causes. Uh, Yes. Causes death also, or anything is in the anything that is between without a limb. We cannot really for us as human beings if we uh, if we intend to do something like that, then we do need uh, a limb. Uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam when he uh, unintentionally he intentionally it, Work as I understand it as uh, uh, like he uh, used his elbow really, uh, but at any rate, it's uh, it's uh, hitting the Egyptian uh, and rendering su support to the member of his own uh, community. Uh, so you do, you do need that. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke with Musa alayhi salam, what is it that he was doing with the, you know, what's, what was in his hand, his right hand? And it was his staff. And, uh, and, uh, we have scholars, the, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked about his uh, staff, uh, first of all, it was, it was comforting. They said, Ines. Though that's not the uh, what we I'm aiming at, uh, but every function that Imam that Sayyidina Musa salam mentioned in that context, uh, he would use basically uh, his hand, his his hand basically. Uh, so I lean on it. That's basically using his limb. Uh, Basically, I hit the uh, leaves. I hit the tree so that it, the leaves would fall, and practically my sheep would would eat. Uh, so, so you always need a limb uh, when you uh, uh, when you act, not Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So. Uh, I think this is very important to uh, to uh, to correct. Uh, 
again, it's not it's not an opinion. This is a direct, you know, mistake. People do mistakes anyhow. It's not about grasping. And he creates without a tool. For his attributes do not resemble the attributes of, of the creation. إذ لا تشبه صفات وصفات الخلق كما لا تشبه ذات وذات الخلق. Just as his essence does not resemble the essence of the creation. For his attributes do not resemble the attributes of the creation. Just as his essence does not resemble the essence of the uh, creation. في الكلام speech الله سبحانه وتعالى possesses uh, speech وأنه تعالى متكلم he commands forbids promises and threatens with timeless eternal speech that subsists in his essence وأنه تعالى متكلم آمر ناه واعد متواعد بكلام أزلي قديم قائم بذاته أوكي لتس لتس أجين وأنه تعالى متكلم الله سبحانه وتعالى هي سيس بوسيس سبيتش يس uh, in as much as we uh, Allah is hearing and seeing one might say that Allah is uh, speaking he commands Amr forbids Nahi uh, Wa'id promises and threatens. Threatens will be mutawa'id. Uh, warns, uh, but threatens with timeless eternal speech that subsists in his essence. The kalam is aliyan qadim. It does not resemble the speech of the creation. That is not with a voice that occurs with the passage of air and the contact of organs. Because for us human being, our understanding is when we speak about amongst us about the about speech. Uh, the production of uh, of speech involves the uh, passage of uh, of air through the uh, uh, you know air that is pushed from the uh, from the lungs really uh, by training pe people when they when they are born they simply uh, cannot deliberately uh, produce the uh, the alphabet hardly so and this and the very fact that they could uh, slowly slowly um almost at uh, nine and ten months they could a little bit earlier even very simple letters and usually it's the p and the b because it's that's the most simple uh they would bubble really at any rate لا يشبه كلام الخلق فليس بصوت يحدث من سلال الهواء واصطكاك أجرام It's not a voice that occurs with the passage of air and contact of organs Nor with letters that stop with the closing of the lips or the movement of the tongue هو 
ولا بحرف ينقطع بإطباق شفت أو تحريك لسان Of course, uh, here of course with with letters. Uh, though though in Arabic it does say also wala uh, harf, nor with uh, a letter that is uh, that stops with the uh, closing of the lips or the movement of the tongue. Uh, and probably we speak about uh, a phoneme, probably. The sound, the letter, the sound. The Quran, the Torah, the Gospel, and the Psalms are his books revealed to his messengers. Uh, let's not forget when the Quran and the Torah and the Bible and the Bible are the books that are the books that are the books but let's not forget the books uh, of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam books of Ibrahim and Musa books of Ibrahim so Sayyidina so Ibrahim alayhi salam had uh, scripture that's one thing. And sometimes they even Al-Raqim uh, in Surah Al-Kaf. Sometimes they speak about it uh, as, a, as scriptures, as a book. The Quran, the Torah, the Gospel, and Psalms. So first of all, the Gospel when we speak about the Torah, the Gospel, and the Psalms, and any uh, ancient book before before the Quran, uh, revealed book, uh, we uh, talk, we do believe in Islam that it suffered from the vagaries of transmission. That's the first thing. Number two, here we speak about the Gospel, of course, al Injil, it's in the singular. Uh, despite the fact that they have uh, adopted four out of uh, of many, so they they have four uh, official uh, gospels, and they do say that the uh, authors are inspired, and they never say that it is revealed because there are uh, talks, texts that such as the uh, genealogy of uh, of Jesus Christ is one him. It does have differences between uh, one gospel and the other, as an example. So the Quran, the Torah, the gospel, and Psalms. About Psalms, there's another dimension. It's predominantly, first of all, there are texts that are extremely problematic. Okay, it cannot, it cannot be basically from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the command, the command to smash the uh, the babies of the enemies against the rocks it cannot be basically a uh, revelation coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number two is that psalms is in general uh, what what basically the people of the book have today it's they are more of prayers attributed to Sayyidina uh, Dawood David alayhi salam Prophet David King David they uh, they say uh, so th these are uh, supplications, and one. In, and now I'm going to use certain uh, um, uh, uh, words that people might think. Um, we talk about uh, uh, the intention is when we supplicate. Asma uh, qibla dua. It's basically. Uh, uh, we have the uh, psychological, spiritual uh, uh, understanding, intention that our our supplication it goes up, if you will. But uh, since the Book of Psalms is predominantly like this, it becomes problematic because this is a revelation, and it should be uh, the other way around in terms of direction. I mean, I talk about, you know, uh, 
I'm not talking about the uh, physical uh, direction really in this case. The Quran is recited with the tongue, written in volumes, uh, basically written in uh, uh, in scribe, for example, because it's a in uh, on parchment, on paper, on whatever uh, whatever uh, was used, but ultimately today uh, we use uh, predominantly we use paper. I say predominantly because there is a there was a lady from Southeast Asia that took her um, quite many years to. Uh, to write the, uh, a copy of the Quran embroidered on silk, something like that, which is very beautiful. You know, sometimes we do need beautiful work of uh, of art, which requires really such a dedication for many, many years. And memorized by hearts. Memorized by hearts, yes, mahfuz, but preserved in the hearts. However, it is eternal and subsists in the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنُّمَا ذَلِكْ قَدِيمٌ القرآن قديم كلام الله عز وجل قائم بذات الله تعالى لا يقول الخصال والافتراق بالانتقال للقلوب والأوراق And this is why we should basically uh, use the word uh, mushaf when we refer to the uh, physical uh, the physical uh, uh, copy if you will so however it is eternal and subsists in the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is not subject to joining or separation by transmission uh, to heart or paper uh, it is subject to joining, it is not subject to joining or uh, separation by transmission to hearts or, uh, or paper, papers. Now, joining is not there in Arabic. It is not subject to uh, uh, to separation. Okay. Uh, disjoined. That's not joining. It's the opposite. Really. It's only only basically is. Uh, uh, it's redundant, but in Arabic, really. Moses, Moses, hear the last speech without a voice or letters, just as the virtuous will see the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without substance, shape, color, or quality, meaning, meaning on the day of judgment and beyond, insha'Allah. وأنا موسى عليه السلام سمع كلام الله تعالى بغير صوت ولا حرف كما يرى الأبرار ذات الله سبحانه من غير شكل واللون من غير جوهر ولا عرض من قواعد العقائد وإذا كانت له هذه الصفات سيدنا موسى, سيدنا موسى عليه السلام it's, very, it's, a, it's a very beautiful uh, text really and of course, there is reference to this uh, in several places in the in the Quran, uh, and this is why he is. We don't name children in, in, in the Arab world, Kareem Allah, but in Southeast Asia they do, and uh, it's really a reference to Sayyidina Musa Allah Musa Taklima, for example, in Surah An Nisa. Uh,
فلما تعنوا دي موسى إن ربك فخلع ما عليك إنك بواد المقدس طوى And uh, there was no possibility. Uh, one might ask how, how this is possible. So, uh, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him without really uh, speech like ours. Okay. Uh, okay. Very simple. When, when you dream, when you have a vision, when you have a dream, uh, don't you hear basically... Uh, Sometimes the speech or uh, uh, in the dream, you are hearing the speech in the dream or sounds that are, you know, coming from other, uh, still in the dream, but they're coming in the dream, not from, uh, uh, not from, not from an external source. You are not hearing with your ears, but you are still hearing. You see things in the dream, and it's not external, it's not through your eyes. So, this is simply to bring it closer home, if you will. You see without your eyes, and you hear without your ears. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could create sound in you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses these attributes, then he is living, omniscient, omnipotent, well, willful, hearing, seeing, and speaking. With life, omniscience, omnipotence, will, hearing, sight, and speech, not merely his essence. With the kind of had sifat, كان حيا عالما قادرا مريدا سميعا بصيرا متكلما بالحياة والعلم والقدرة والرادة والسمع والبصر والكلام لا بمرجع الراد الذات فالله سبحانه وتعالى possess these attributes uh, then he is living omniscient omnipotent Willful hearing, seeing, and speaking. Okay. Not merely his essence. Not merely his essence. So the similarity between uh, the sixth principle and the seventh principle is that uh, we talk about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that exist without really uh, resembling anything in the creation. No use of, uh, of tools, of limbs, of organs. And tomorrow, inshallah, we will deal with the no. Divine actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think enough for today. Bismillah azza wa jal. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ta'asakir wa tubilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.